Britain TV. All right, welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. My name is Roman Bissick. Of course, I come to you with a very pertinent conversation this month of uh, when we are observing, you know, Diabetes Awareness Month in November. In 2020, over 300,000 people were affected by this problem, diabetes. And we also do know that out of the 7.9 billion people who are on this earth, 795 million are obese. The Americans are spending over 500 million US dollars to treat obesity related diseases. That's how bad the situation is. We also do know that out of the 7.9 billion people who roam this earth, yes, they are actually overweight. These are people who are prone to type 2 diabetes, that is 95% of the individuals. So you want to talk about what kind of legal aspects or legal frameworks Uganda can come up with to actually protect its uh, civilians in that regard. I do have David Kabanda, Council David Kabanda. He is the executive director of Center for Food and Adequate Living Rights, and he joins me right now. A very good morning, David. Good morning, Ronnie. It's been a while since we last interacted. How have you been? Good. How have you been? Indeed, I've been yeah. well. Yeah. Talk to us about, uh, first of all, the Center for Food and Adequate Living Rights. Uh, you've been doing some amazing work since 2018. Bring us up to speed so that the viewer is in the know of, uh, of the work you're actually doing. Yes, I come from the Center for Food and Adequate mm. Living Rights. Mm. The center is predominantly legal. We mm. are lawyers who are using legal tools to mm. promote the right to food mm. and adequate living, mm. making sure that law contributes to health diets, contributes to food security, food safety, but also making sure that the, 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 the food environments are safe for everyone. Mm. And when I talk about food environments, I'm talking about the entire value chain of food, where the food is being grown mm. the f with the farmers, the mm. transporters. Mm. Romeo, you've seen how people transport cows and, mm. and, and, and everything. The poultry mm. practices, then when it comes to the market, the processors, but also where we eat food from, from farm to fork. Mm. So in all these chains, you'll find that we have law that the law must play its mm. part mm. because we are dealing with science we are dealing with chemicals mm. we are dealing with people's lives mm. food has even the capacity to, to to deal with your dna this mm. is what people don't know mm. so we, we it's something that is very crucial like mm. that law mm. cannot be silent on it mm. and we are using a human rights based approach to make sure that People participate, people have enough food, and people eat safe food. Indeed. Yeah. And of course, David Kavanda, I'm also getting information courtesy of Morning at NTV that most of the deaths we've registered, in Africa yeah. especially, mm. owe to COVID-19. Many of these individuals had comorbidities mm. and many had diabetes. Mm. So we are getting information that uh, many actually died because they had this comorbidity. Yes, seriously, if you read mm. literature from WHO, mm. even from the Ministry of Health mm. in Uganda, Uganda National uh, Alliance, for non-communicable diseases. Mm. If you had diabetes, it was extremely difficult for you to survive that disease. Mm. Many people who survived was because they did not have pre-existing ailments. Let mm. me tell you, malnutrition in mm. all its forms, because when we talk about malnutrition, we are talking about undernutrition, mm. stunting and wasting and anemia. Mm. Right now, 39% of uh, women in Uganda of reproductive age mm. are anemic. So they wow. don't have enough blood. I see. And the, the, the predominant causes, they are underfed. Mm. You know, you have 29% of the children stunted. 57% of Ugandans suffered stuntedness when they were young. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is under, you know, under nutrition. But mm. we also have another big elephant in the room, mm. obesity, mm -hmm. you know, what some people call it overweight, but we don't want to, you call it, I mean, overnutrition, mm -hmm. because we don't think such a thing happens. And, and, and many people are becoming obese and overweight. And we used to think this yeah. was only affecting the older people, but then I was reading literature and they were telling us even the younger ones are actually subject to obesity. And, and, and by this is why we need to be worried now, mm. because the trends and the statistics mm. with children 33% of, of our children in Uganda are overweight and they are becoming obese. Children are, 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 you know, are getting diseases mm. that, that used to, you know, to happen to very people who are in, in advanced age. Mm. But children are dying, children are becoming sick, and malnutrition is causing all these morbidities. The parents are watching, they want to know what are the factors exacerbating this, David? Yeah, so they, they, they are simple. Mm. 
uh, parents, you see, children have three, you know, environments mm -hmm. in which they, they, they get into this one. They have what they call the pester power. When a child asks a, a parent, mm. buy this, the parent will buy. I need a soda. I, I need a soda. I need this. That the, is ten times uh, in a the, day. Yes. The parent doesn't the, realize the, that. The, 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 they don't know. Mm. Then secondly, children have money because parents give money, relatives, you know, you, they give money. So parents have the buying power. Mm. Then the third thing, the, the, the children, when the children learn something, mm. they, they will carry it. So the, 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 the food and beverages industry mm. is targeting children. This is why you'll have promotion of these deadly products in schools. Romeo, why okay. would we have sugar-sweetened beverages in school canteens, for example? Where we have teachers who know better. No, not only how teachers, the ministry. This would be. Both okay. Minister of Education and mm. Minister of mm. Health. Mm. Why should we continue having all these processed mm. products in school canteens? Mm. Number one. Number two, why should we have the food and beverages industry? And I, without fear of any contradiction, mm. you, you, you can talk about the tournaments that are being organized by many of these companies pro promoting their products to our children. Indeed. So you take their life and you take their money <laughs> at Indeed. the same so time. So the problem here, they are not talking about the adverse health effects their fizzy drinks might have on the children if it, taken. That is very silent. Yes. They, they, that is very silent. And we, uh, we want to, to, you know, to speak to, 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 to the powers that be. Indeed. We want to appeal to the Minister of Health. She has all the powers to, to, to help us with the regulation, mm -hmm. and this is what we are pushing for. Can we have a front of the park labeling regulation? And mm -hmm. this is what we want, because many people can't read mm -hmm. And we, if we can have a color coded. If I see a, a product having red, mm -hmm. then I'll know that product is high either in sugar or in salt mm. or in fat, then I'll not buy it. Or when I buy it and I take it, then I know that I shouldn't take too much. Mm. You understand? Because mm. these products don't mm. kill you instantly. They'll kill you over time. Mm. You know, so, but, but, but if, if once in a while I want to have a soda, mm. I should know that in this particular bottle, there are 10 teaspoons of, you, you, Romeo, you sometimes have taken sugar maybe mm. in a cup. Mm. How many teaspoons do you put in a cup? Two spoons. Two spoons. Indeed. But you have a, a, a cup of soda Indeed. having over 10 at one intake. I see where the problem is. You, you understand? Mm. So you have a child, you, you see parents having children one year or even below, mm. feeding them on soda. So if that child we, is to take like five sodas in a day, it, that is 50. 50. Spoonfuls yes. And, and, the, and the beverage industry mm. will never tell you that. They, they will ne not label. We, we are now struggling to tell people but you see mm. it is very difficult Indeed. because many people have now been trapped mm. they find the soda very you know good and easy it is you pick and, mm. and, and go it is easy to pick and go have you ever related why milk is less expensive than soda but people will leave the milk and take soda. Indeed. You, you understand? Indeed. Be because this awareness is not with the people. So this is why we are now seeing escalation of uh, diabetes mm. now. Uh, this month is dedicated now mm. to diabetes. Indeed. Why? The international world, UN, Uganda is a member of, of, of the UN. Mm. Way back in 2005, Saturn came up with a resolution mm. that in November must be dedicated to uh, diabetes awareness mm -hmm. and for us as lawyers we are not only talking about the disease because the science is, is, is available Indeed. we are now calling upon government can we regulate Uganda, yes mm. Uganda Communications Commission mm. why don't you prevail over you know, food companies when they do their billboards, even mm. having uh, children as ambassadors of, of, of these products. And, and, and second, why shouldn't we have a Ministry of Health, wh which is in charge of promotion of good health, public health? Mm. Why don't you, 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 you have an enabling act? Why don't you come up with regulations and say that please? Uh, if you are producing a product X, these are the parameters. Mm -hmm. This is how it must be labeled. This is, this is what you must mm. be, be, be doing. I, if you may allow me, I, I, I need now to go some, uh, somehow into diabetes. Go ahead, David. 
Uh, Ugandans who are watching me, mm. or who will watch uh, even after this show it's on, on, on our mm. YouTube mm. Uh, okay. and, and online, mm. should understand that the problem is big. Diabetes is a killer and it mm. is causing morbidities. Many people are on drugs. At least those who are already diabetic know mm. what I'm talking mm. about. You'll take your drugs till when you die. That's number one. Then number two, if you get diabetes, the likelihood of you getting legs amputated is very high. Mm. We have seen people with rotten feet. If you have each feet mm. already, get to know that the, 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 the indication is that you might be at the verge of, of getting diabetes or you already mm. have it, you just don't know. Mm. And we are talking about diabetes, but we also have people who are in the category of pre-diabetes. Yeah, you, you are not yet there, but you are almost You're there. You're on the cusp of Yes, so there. the sugar levels mm. are high. You have, you have a lot of sugar deposits in your blood, and this mm. happens with, uh, when your insulin can no longer now work well and uh, to regulate the glucose in your and body. This is when you might need insulin shots, which are so expensive. Mm. And, 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 and very, you know, you, 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 it, it is a disturbing kind mm. of practice if mm. you are supposed to to inject yourself yes, all the time and, and, and everything. Mm. And, and this is what people need to know or do. One, we are talking about diet. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a, an example of me, Romeo. Yes, uh, two, three months ago, I was 90, 95 kilograms. Mm -hmm. And the doctor told me, you are in danger. You are talking about food, but look at you. Mm -hmm. I, I have cut, and I'm now 78 kilograms. And it is very possible, and I'm speaking to Ugandans, Indeed. that you don't need medicine. You just need to adjust Indeed. a little bit of the lifestyle. I see. I'm around 76 kilograms. So that means if you embark on these workouts, consistent workouts, you're in a better yeah, position yes. to beat type uh -huh. 2 or even type 1 diabetes. Uh, you, you see, type 1 is a bit di difficult, but it's again, usually type 2. Yes, you must also, even for mm. type 1, you mm. must exercise, mm. you must eat well. And when we talk about eating well, mm. please cut down on foods that are high in carbohydrates. We, we've learned this in primary school. Mm. Uh, even if you've not gone to any school, you'll know that uh, when you eat cassava, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, even our matoka has some ca carbohydrates. Yes. So you cut down on, on the carbohydrates. Mm. Don't take sugar. Mm. The sugar we have on the Ugandan market is not good for you. Please don't take sugar. Are our regulators telling yes, us this? Please that is the don't mm. take sugar. If I can kneel before Ugandans here on the show, I think I should do it. Mm. Don't take sugar. Sugar is a danger to you. Mm. Don't. So when you cut down on sugar, mm. you cut down on, on, on carbohydrates, you, you cut down on fat. You, you, you can eat uh, once in a while, but yes. don't overdo it. Mm. And also salt. Many people want to add salt even when they are eating. In already cooked food. That one is a danger. Please stop it. Mm. I listen to my doctor mm. because at some point he said you are pre-diabetic, almost pre-diabetic, mm. but you can reverse that. When I went back, uh, the, the doctor said, wonderful, you can now go back and eat whatever you want. You, you're out of danger. <laughs> but one thing that I, I, I found mm. out in these two, three months is it is extremely difficult to find safe, you know, and health food on the Ugandan market. Mm -hmm. When you go to the supermarkets and maybe be, because you, you, when you are eating rice, for example, mm -hmm. they, they allow you to eat, but it must not be high in, we call it GI in our language. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, nutritionists know it. Mm -hmm. it so, so you, where do you find it labeled in Uganda? It, it, it is not, mm -hmm. unless in, you, you go to some big supermarkets which sell, you know, to, 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 you know, to foreigners. Mm -hmm. But in our ordinary markets, the food is not labeled. You, it is extremely difficult to get such food. And another trap, mm -hmm. we have what we call now weight loss stigma. You see, people who have known you uh, as uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, a boss, and big, uh, you yes. know, they'll start, w w what are you suffering from? Yes. Do you have debts? Mm. I, mean, I have even friends who told me, start uh, RVs, Kavanda, you, you know, <laughs> you, you understand. So weight loss is associated with something that is very, very tough. No, yes, you have problems. Yes. No, 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 you are undergoing through some challenges. I you should, you know. And this is why we as lawyers... And people are spending millions of dollars on weight loss. 
it's seriously. Mm. And, and for me, I am here to speak to everyone. Okay. You don't need medicine. Mm. My doctor told me, and I have practiced it, mm. and I'm a testimony to everyone. Mm. You don't need medicine. Mm. You just need yourself. Maybe one or two people to hold your hand because you really need someone mm. to, keep, you know, to, to, to pick your hand and say, Romeo, we can run. Let us yes. go. And sometimes you don't need to go to a gym. If you don't have the money, you can do exercise at home. Ugandans, Indeed. learn to walk. Indeed. Yes, walk. Are you, you know, it, it, yes, we have the cars. Park it, mm. walk, you know, such that it, 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 it helps your body, yes, yes. you know, pick up, you know, and, and, and you, burn, you burn the calories, you burn the fat, you sweat. Sweating is, is, is adorable. Mm. I, I, I think we also need to ask government going forward in the local government um, you know, in places of work for example mm. you realize that uh, many employers or companies do not put emphasis on nutrition but they are losing a lot of money mm. when they are employees cannot work well mm. so we have started another campaign going to companies mm. you you make a lot of money when you invest in nutrition of your employees mm -hmm. uh, you know I, 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 what right. they eat will affect their output or productive output. Yes, yes definitely when people do not eat mm. well or mm. when they don't get the the nutrients that they need mm. the cognitive effect Ability. is there you cannot concentrate you mm. cannot work well Indeed. so even you know the employment act and so the, the legal framework should be supportive of, of nutrition. I, I, I love the conversation going yeah. into mm. the workplace because it mm. also made me think about the children who are going back into the education sphere. Yes. Nutrition mm. should be paramount mm. because it will affect their cognitive abilities mm. in actually um, absorbing and deciphering the information coming in from the teacher. Do, do you know mm. that uh, US and UWHO has, of course, advised mm. countries that one dollar invested in, in nutrition, mm. you'll get a return of $30. Indeed. Let me, t if, 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 if someone told you mm. that if you invest 10,000 Uganda shillings, mm. you'll get 300,000, mm. you know, as returns. That's a very good investment. Mm. And we are now speaking to National Planning Authority. We are now having the NDP3. Mm. But you realize that that fact is not captured well. Mm. So why don't we invest in nutrition such that we get the, the return on investment. Mm. Children are going back to school. Government has consistently refused to, 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 to enter that space. Of course they fear the cost. Well, but when you fear this but like you said, cost, when you invest a dollar, you invest a dollar, you mm. get 30. That is that thirty dollars mm. in return. That's a lot of money. Is that why we are dealing with this over thirty-three percent stuntedness within our country among our children? The fact that government has refused to take on this challenge, especially within the school sphere. Uh, it, 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 one of one of the issues is that mm. that children go to school and they are hungry. You have thirty-three percent of your population suffering mod mm. moderate, of course, food mm. uh, food 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 insecurity, mm. and eleven percent acute. If there is food, it will be portion and beans. Portion and beans, and that is what they call food and it is not food we've told people that mm. that refined portion is also a danger to your to your life mm. they, they, they are not listening this, mm. this is what we are serving to our children mm. if you are taking your children to a school that serves portion from monday to sunday mm. you, you, you are just taking your children to their grave Indeed. and uh, to the early grave mm. and this is what we are now continuously telling people mm. and government that we need to work on, on, mm. on this assassin. I call that assassin, the assassin mm. we the are living with. Mm. Yes, the silent one. You see, in, your own, in our homes, mm. we have guards, we have dogs, we have security cameras, but we sleep with another assassin in our beds. <laughs> it's people are carrying baby fat. Indeed. You find someone carrying, and, and I'm not using this to stigmatize anyone, mm. but I, I'm speaking of a fact. Mm. A baby fat is a sign that, your insulin that you have insulin resistance. Mm. Any time that baby fat is going to kill you, mm. sh shake it off. Shake it the, off. The problem, they don't want to shake it off because it is associated with money. They think if I have a stomach, yes, people think I'm rich and so forth. But w then, uh, gone are those days. Well, you're going to die. It's you're going it, to it, die. You're going to die. Mm. Yeah, I have no, you, I, I can't hide it anymore. Mm. I had it. I had, uh, I had. Uh, I remember that. Uh, yes, you remember. <laughs> but I, I, I had to cut it Indeed. off. And lastly, as we conclude, mm. 
government must invest itself in regulating the the gyms, the saunas. Mm. You realize that many people now, when we talk about these issues, many people want to exercise, and the only place they run to is the gym. gym. Mm. But the, are these instructors uh, licensed? Yeah. Are they trained? Do they know what they are doing? Someone will tell you, maybe stretch your leg like this when they are killing you in, in, the, in the process. In so we want uh, these, uh, for example, uh, gyms and uh, aerobics places, re, you know, licensed and, 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 and supervised. Mm -hmm. and, but, but we also want the roads to, 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 to allow us run, to, to allow us uh, ride our bicycles, you know, walking lanes must be uh, mm -hmm. implemented mm -hmm. within the cities, mm -hmm. um, most especially. Of course, it all begins at the agricultural firms. What, do yeah. you, what kind of legal frameworks do you want to see take center stage from government onto these agricultural firms, where the food is coming from, so that we ensure that the food that is coming in from the source mm -hmm. is actually of quality and it's not going to kill people? Is it, what is very interesting mm. with the farms, it, it, it is another discussion. Mm. Farmers mm. Uh, put off their clothes and they put on, uh, you know, uh, and they start spraying, yeah. not knowing that they are killing themselves and, and the environment. I see. The first thing that we want government to do mm. is the law on extension workers. Mm. Many Ugandans are yearning for information, but they don't have the information. How many extension workers do we have in every parish in this country, mm. and how many farmers are there? They also agree there are few. They, they, mm. they are not even there. Indeed. A few, you may find one, two in the district. Mm. Government has refused to implement what they committed to. Uh, and the ones we have even tell you, I do not have funding to actually uh, go to District uh, X and execute. My you mandate. see, and, and we have a policy which government must implement, mm. but we are also asking for law to mm. be able to, if, I, if my mother in the village wants to, if the services of an extension work, mm. she should be getting it because mm. beyond what we are talking about as processed food, yes. we also have aflatoxins in the food which start in the garden. Indeed. Post storage harvest, and so forth. Yes, storage. Mm. Many people, how many people in Uganda would maybe store uh, their produce, mm. which is like two tons, they don't have the capacity mm. to consume constructed such stores. Mm -hmm. And you see, in, in, in the constitution, we, we must have food reserves, mm -hmm. which we have consistently asked the government mm -hmm. to establish, and they have refused. Mm -hmm. We don't know why. We really don't know why. It is only Uganda in the East African you know, community mm -hmm. that has refused, mm -hmm. because even the East African Community Treaty, every partner state must establish strategic national reserves. Mm -hmm. and, and why do you need them? It's because when you have an over pro production, the farmers can keep their produce mm. with you. And maybe you release when there is scarcity. Uh, because in mm. Uganda, the problem is not that we don't grow enough food. We do. The only challenge is uh, we, we don't know how to put it where it is needed. I hear you. you know, the availability of food and the accessibility mm. is the problem. Mm. You'll find that people in Karamoja are dying right now of, mm. of hunger. World Food Program has been doing a very great job there. And, and yet in other places of the country, you find there is abundance and the food is, you know, very low cost. Mm. So we want government to establish food reserves. Mm. We want government to, to give us a law on extension, mm. on extension work. Mm. And we, there is a law which we call the, which is called the, uh, the, the Uganda Agrochemicals Act. Mm. Under Section 18, we have almost 17 regulations that must be made by the Minister of mm. Agriculture. Mm. Of those 17, it is only two regulations that have been made. Mm. And we are asking ourselves, why shouldn't the Minister of Agriculture give us these regulations? And I'm very happy that we now have uh, uh, Honorable Tumwebaze. Mm. I see he's, he's, he's very active. Mm. But I want to appeal to him that if, we, if, we, if you want us to, to get to where we are, mm. please pass those regulations regulations because chemicals are killing us. Mm. In many countries, you, for example, you, there is that whitish stuff on tomatoes. Mm. You, have you gone to the market and you found that tomatoes are whitish? Yes, yes, uh, yes. It is a chemical called mancozeb. Mm. It, it, it is a fungicide. Mm. In EU, last month, it was banned. You cannot now use mancozeb in mm. EU. 
And here, we, we are using it here and in proportions that are not even allowed. David, we are also using chemicals to preserve meat in the butchers. Uh, 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 you see, that is a discussion which uh, at some point... Mm. It, it, it fizzled it, out. It yeah, was there yeah, at some point and then yeah. it fizzled out. People continue <laughs> to go to the butchers. Yeah, it, it became political. It, became, mm. and, uh, it took many you know, ways. Uh, till but when, it's still happening. Till when some people said, no, 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 it is safer that you keep quiet about that trade. Because you did hear what used to happen. I would say yeah. the same chemicals that they use to preserve bodies within the morgue or the mortuaries, mm -hmm. the same chemicals that they are using in the butchers to preserve mm -hmm. that meat so that it doesn't go bad. Mm -hmm. If it's still happening, people are dying. And it is not only that, even with, in fish, you, you, and the, <laughs> oh, oh, <no. laughs> the irony is now when you want to buy fish you must go where there are flies can you imagine indeed because now you you know that mm. they never used formalin in, in you know preserving mm. them but also the practice in poultry mm. i have i have told people and over and again mm. we do not have regulation in the poultry sector in this country how so and how dire is that situation so you see, every farmer in Uganda is now a veterinary officer or a veterinary yeah, you doctor. Mm. You understand? Indeed. You see, it, it is an expensive service mm. somehow. Mm. So if you, you, you watch a veterinary officer on your farm doing something, you pass you, on the information. You, you, you'll do it yourself the following day when they, you, you say it's the, the same problem. I see. And in, in some of these chemicals that are injected mm. into the birds, the, 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 the manufacturers would advise that after, maybe don't eat um, after, maybe for seven days. Mm -hmm. Or milk, you'll not take that milk for mm. maybe 14 days. Mm. But tell me that Ugandan mm. farmer who will allow to power the milk or to, to, you know, to bury the eggs, mm. they'll bring it into the market. Uh, you mentioned something that was yeah. really great. You said a farmer or a veterinary officer executes something and they'll copy it and pass it on to another person. Yes. Even for diabetes patients, it is working. I'll have diabetes, I'll be on some kind of medicine, mm. and then when someone who is having the same similar problem, mm. I'll, I'll be like, I'm having such a problem that is similar to yours. Mm. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm taking such and such mm. medicine. Go and get this medicine. Mm. How dire is that, prescribing my medicine to someone who has not gone to a doctor for diabetes? Uh, and that is because it is different. Yes, and that and is also gave us variations between type two and type one. Yes, mm. and that is killing many people. Mm. Please don't start yourself on medication without a doctor's advice mm. because diabetes is there is diabetes one and diabetes two. So you don't know what you're suffering from. The first thing you should do go to a doctor. And we have now asked the government. Can we have one nutritionist in, in, in at least health mm. center threes, mm. every health center three, such that if I want to check whether I have diabetes or mm. not, I can get the services. Mm. Number two, mm. can we have the, 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 the services, the goods, the medicines into mm. the hospitals? B because it is expensive to go to private mm. hospitals. But the first thing is screening. Can we have services mm. when everyone, if, if I want to go and find out, because even when you are pre-diabetic, every time you have to go and check how sh your sugars, you know, are behaving or misbehaving in your body. So we, we, government should give us one, nutritionists, at least to the level of health center three. But number two, they must put services in, in these health centers, government health centers, because many people cannot afford the, 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 the private, uh, you know, uh, health centers. It's going forward, we'll have really... David Kavanda, people. very insightful conversation with Councillor David Kavanda. He is the Executive Director for the Center for Food and Adequate Living Rights. Thank you very much, sir, for having come through to acquaint us with this information. You are really welcome. came in handy. Thank Looking forward so to another encounter. Thank you so And of much. course, you're still watching Morning at 10 TV. Some messages are in the offing. I mean, a break but we return shortly. We'll be right